Welcome back, everyone. Please take your seats. I hope that the lunch was good, that you made some great new connections, and also was able to get a well-deserved little rest. For um, here we go again. I'm just going to go ahead and start. To start off this afternoon program, I will give you Ms. Christine Batruche, director of the Lundin Foundation. Lundin Foundation is one of the esteemed sponsors to the Stockholm Philanthropy Symposium. Please give a hand for Christine Batruche. Do I have my slide? I'm very happy to be here, and I found the sessions that we had this morning extremely interesting and relevant, and I think there, there are a few common themes which I'll try to address. The picture is uh, one of our programs that we have right now in Norway, which is helping uh, refugees uh, integrate in the workforce. But let me start with the beginning. These are the themes I'm going to address, and I'm going to move right along because I just have a few minutes. We start off with philanthropy. Um, Lundin is a family, a family of Swedish entrepreneurs. They have a number of companies in the uh, extractive industry. And they have created two entities to deal with uh, philanthropic activities. One of them is the Lundin Foundation, which is basically a corporate foundation. I'm on the board of that foundation. And really what it is meant to do is to work in partnership with companies and assist them in their corporate responsibility execution on the ground. Uh, the second foundation is a family foundation, the Adolf uh, uh, Henrik Lundin Venture Partners, which focuses more on impact investment. I'll come back to that. Uh, since 2008, when the foundations were created, we have expended close to 800 million uh, Swedish kronos. And we've had three phases, and I think this is relevant to some of the discussions that have, had, have taken place until now. Uh, the first we describe from 2006 to 2008 as spray and pay. And basically, and this is the learning curve, is that initially when you start off a foundation, you support causes or you support specific charities, but there is no common theme, there is no sense of direction. Uh, maybe we could have benefited from some of the advisory services. We evolved uh, over time to uh, transition towards a shared value and uh, market-based approach. And this was really a way of making more relevant our community involvement by trying to connect the activities of the corporate uh, activities with the foundation work, with the idea of uh, making communities benefit from our presence, but in a different way. Our third uh, step in evolution started in 2012, and here we define certain strategic pillars. So it has taken us a number of years to say, well, what are the areas on which we would like to focus and really add value? Uh, and I will distinguish in between the two foundations for the time being, I'll talk about the corporate foundation, and these are the pillars that we've looked at. Uh, the first thing is resource governance. We, we work in the extractive in different uh, continents, and one of the things we try to do is where there is the need for it is to assist host government in their management of resources. So we do training, we do capacity building, if you can call it that. On a more local level in those countries, we do education and skills training, and part of it is to uh, help local communities develop their skills to uh, either service our own needs or service other industries. We do the same thing with local procurement and supply chains. One of the ideas is that you know, any corporate presence involves needs for certain goods and services, and if we can help the local communities build up the capacity to provide those services, then it's a win-win proposition. Economic diversification is very important in the extractive, uh, in, in the extractive field, as a uh, country uh, which are resource rich usually focus on only that resource, and that resource is finite, so it's a way of finding other business opportunities, other fields of competence which those countries can, uh, can develop in. 
Um, and the last, and but not least, is our projects on social and environmental innovation, because this is really one of the areas where we feel we can add value. Just uh, an example of what we do on the local procurement side, I won't read it, you can do it yourself, but this is a, a group of former employees of the company, and we help them set up their own company uh, to service our needs, and also, as you can see, uh, now they're, uh, they're providing catering services to uh, a local hospital. So this is like building the capacity of local entrepreneurs to do service other needs. Um, the uh, Adolf Landin Family Foundation is focusing much more on what we call now impact investment, and what we have done to date are 31 investment uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, focusing on themes, because you do have to narrow the themes, which are now energy uh, access, financial inclusion, and agriculture. And one example of this is the MCOPER project, which is a fabulous project of equipping uh, homes with solar panels, the cost of which gets paid on a mobile application, pay as you use, and uh, people after 10 months paying the equivalent of what they would have done with for kerosene, actually have free energy for the rest of, uh, of the value of the uh, solar panels. And we have found that over time, we've equipped 500,000 homes with that, which means probably 4 million people. 2,500 uh, people are employed in this venture. There are huge savings in terms of costs. We anticipate them to around $300 uh, million. And great CO2 savings as well, 380,000 uh, uh, tons of carbon emissions reduced. So, like everybody else, there are lessons to be learned, and this is my last slide. Uh, the first thing is that one has to focus on limited set of development objectives and challenges. You can't address all issues, so focus. That we've discovered that the weakness of charities, if we may call it that, is that they're dependent on non-recurring sources of funding, Business does give this perennity. If you create a business which has a social or environmental impact as a goal, it can actually sustain itself beyond the initial grant. And then it can scale the issue. And scale is, matters because you know, the size of the problems we're dealing with on this planet are huge, and you need to be able to, uh, to ensure that whatever idea you develop has uh, uh, an ability to expand. I think uh, that foundations play a catalytic role in demonstrating the viability and scalability of new business models, and we're very much into encouraging new business models to address new challenges. And finally, building and scaling successful solutions requires an involvement beyond just money. So we do give money, but more importantly, we try to accompany whatever businesses, social and, uh, or environmental businesses we support with business advice, management plan, training, and uh, we find that in this way we're off affording something more than just money, but also the capacity to sustain. So thank you very much, and I've left a few copies of the annual report of the Foundation if you're interested. Thanks. Thank you, Christine.